Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Bronze Spomer Outdoors Mystery Cartridge. And there it was. Did you catch it? Well, stay tuned. We are going to reveal. Now, before we discuss our mystery cartridge, I do want to thank our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help out and join, patreon.com, Ron's Bummer Outdoors. Always subscribe and like this channel. That always helps keep us on the air. Hey, before we reveal our magic cartridge, we are going to give you the rules of the game so you might just be the winner. Here it is. First one to guess it, it's the winner. And guess what the big surprise is? You win bragging rights for guessing the cartridge before anybody else did. Of course, nobody's going to prove it one way or the other, but... So here's the deal. I will give you a hint, and you try to figure out what the mystery cartridge is, and afterwards we'll reveal it, talk all about it, give some ballistics, and we're going to have a great time. So, the mystery cartridge is one of only 15 cartridges that were ever made U.S. commercially in this particular caliber. Number two, this cartridge beat the former speed record holder in this caliber. Number three, it is a short action. Now, that's going to narrow it down for you. Number four, commercial rifles were produced for this cartridge before the cartridge itself was a commercial release. That doesn't happen very often, so that might give it away. This cartridge was not named after the manufacturer who finally released it as a commercial cartridge. That gives you a bunch more clues. The... Uh, Speed record that this cartridge set was subsequently broken by another cartridge in the same caliber just 10 years later. The cartridge is based on a parent case that is now more than 120 years old. <laughs> Number eight, the designer of this was a gun rider as well as a wildcatter. Not too many of those guys around. Number nine, the factory changed the Wildcat's shoulder angle from 15 degrees to 20 degrees. That might clue in some of you guys. Number 10, the lightest bullet this thing shoots is 60 grains, and the modern loads will drive that 3,800 feet per second. So we're talking about a bit of a speed demon here. This cartridge was released by Remington in 1934. Now, a bunch of you have got to have it by now. But number 12, just in case you're not there yet, the heaviest bullet this thing shoots is 120 grains. And that one might get, eh, today you might get 2,800 feet per second out of it. Number 13, it was announced as a Wildcat way back in 1928. <laughs> now, we're getting far enough back there that not a lot of us are going to remember the release. <laughs> I can't, it's a little bit fuzzy. Number 14. 1955, that date, that was the watershed year that started this particular cartridge's decline. And it was a rather steep one. And that's our next clue. Number 15, this cartridge was displaced by the new 243 Winchester and 6 millimeter Remington. Yeah, both of those came out and <whistles> this round's popularity really took a nosedive. And number 16, the cartridge was originally called, this one's going to give it away for sure, the 25 Roberts. Yeah, by now you figured it out, right? 257 Roberts, introduced 1934 by Remington. And man, was that a successful cartridge of its day. It was shooting faster than the previous record holder, which was 250 Savage. Bingo, right there. And you see it's just a little bit bigger, so obviously it's going to be pushing the same bullets about 100, feet, uh, yeah, about 100 feet per second faster. So 87 grain out of this one at 3,000 feet per second, which is why it was called the 253,000. Here comes the Roberts and pushes that same 87 grain bullet about 100 feet per second faster. These days you can get 200 feet per second more than they got back there when they released it because of the better powders. So that's kind of how the evolution of all that went. So let's go back through those um, hints and talk a little bit more about them. So when I said this was only one of 15 cartridges in the 25 caliber up front, I had no idea there were 15 of them. There's some really oldies in there. Now, most of us can think of some of the easy ones like 25-06, obviously, but that didn't come around until 1969. But you know what? That was a wildcat even before the Roberts was. 
uh, Niedner or Neidner, and not how you pronounce his name, how exactly how you do it. Um, he, was it Adolf Neidner? Yeah, it's Adolf Niedner or Neidner, and he was quite the little gunsmith and wildcatter too. And he had this 25 by six going, but at the time they didn't have slow enough powders to really take advantage of that extra powder space. So that hung on as a wildcat clear up until 1969. So that was a long time. Now, the other one that actually came before that, some of you might have thought of, 257 Weatherby. Roy came out with that in 1944. I don't think he released it as a cartridge till 48, but he had it out there as a wildcat uh, prior to this one. So that was interesting. Um, some of the, well, this is kind of the latest one. By the way, this guy isn't a 25 at all, as you can obviously tell. I just threw that up there to confuse the heck out of you. That's a 338, 378 Weatherby Magnum. Just in case you were getting cocky, the uh, 25 WSSM is the latest 25 to come out. That's not doing very well. And that's uh, getting us down into the oddballs that I don't have samples of. I do have this one. This is the 25 Remington, which is a pretty good looking little cartridge right there. It's rimless, fairly modern looking, but that came out around 1909 or so for the Remington Model 8 auto loading rifle. Didn't do all that well, but pretty nice little cartridge. But some of the other ones are the 2520 Winchester, and that is a real puny, weak little thing. You might have gotten 2,300 feet per second out of it with about a 60 grain bullet, maybe generated 700 foot pounds of energy. But the cool thing about the 2520 is it was the cartridge that was used by Jordan to shoot the famous Jordan buck out of Wisconsin in, I think it was the 1920s. He had this little lever action 2520 and this big monster buck jumped up and for quite a while it was the world record whitetail. I still think it's holding position number two or three and he shot it with that little 2520. The next one was the 2535 Winchester which is a little closer towards that 3030 um, and that one was famously used to take old three toes which was a rampaging grizzly in the early 1900s. For 10 or 11 years, this grizzly was killing livestock all over this country. And the guy who finally got rid of that killer bear was born about six miles just away from the ranch here. Six miles away or so, and then he went out after it down in the corner of Idaho and Utah along the border by Bear Lake. Some of the names for this thing were Old Ephraim and the Bear Lake Monster, but it would wipe out a dozen sheep a night, eat one of them and then move on. And they just had a heck of a time. He was wiping livestock right and left. And this guy took him seven shots with his 2535 to take that grizzly out. Then there was the 2520 single shot, all those long, skinny, straight walled ones. Uh, the 2520 Marlin, which is pretty much identical to the 2520 Winchester. Back in those days, Marlin and Winchester would kind of load the same thing and give it their own name. The 2521 Stevens, the 2525 Stevens, the 2536 Marlin, which is real similar to the 2535 Winchester, the 256 Winchester Magnum, and that was an oddball little handgun cartridge that came out in the 60s and didn't go anywhere. I think it was loaded for maybe one Ruger handgun for a while, and then it petered out. A few guys have built them in rifles, and they actually perform a lot better in a rifle than they did there, but as you can see, you're just not going to get a lot out of that little guy. 35, or the 25 Remington, we've already shown you that one. The 256 Newton, which was really a 6.5. That one was based off of the 30-06, and it actually came out before the uh, Roberts or the Needner, uh, but it just really didn't go anywhere, um, and it wasn't really a 25. He was using 26 caliber bullets on top of it, so I think we can discount that one. Then the 250 Savage, which we've discovered, and the 257 Weatherby Magnum 25 out 6 and a 25 WSM. So that means we're due for another one. <laughs> there were only 15, a bunch of them are already obsolete. So next one coming up is probably going to be the 6 millimeter Creedmoor neck up to 25 with a 6.5 Creedmoor neck down or something like that. There's some Wildcats out like that already. Um, a lot of guys have taken that WSM and necked it down to 25 to make a really fast Wildcat. Don't know if any of those will ever become commercial cartridges, but boy, the 257 Roberts came, made a big splash, and then as soon as that 6 millimeter Remington 243 went Winchester came out it just went down the drains in a hurry now why was that probably because both of those were seen as better dual purpose rifles 
You could shoot bullets as light as 70 grains, maybe even 65 grains in those. So they were considered to be really effective for the local farm varmints and whatnot, marmots and uh, ground squirrels, uh, coyotes, foxes and hen owls and all that. And a 100 grain bullet was judged good enough for deer. So poor little Roberts lost out to those. But you know, the interesting thing is that six millimeter Remington, I think I've got one right here, yeah. You put that beside the Roberts and what do you notice? Gosh, they almost look identical, don't they? That's because both of them came from that 757 Mauser. And that's the family right there. 757 Mauser's neck down to make the uh, 257 Roberts and then neck down again to make the six millimeter Remington. It's all in the family. Hey, thanks for playing the mystery game. You wanna see some quick numbers if we have time. 257 Roberts with an 85 grain Nosler bullet these days can be pushed, oh, about 3,381 feet per second. And you can see here on our drop charts at 200, 340, 400 yards, what you're getting for drops in green. And then in black, you've got your deflection in the wind, 10 miles an hour, right angle. And then the red is your remaining energy at those distances. This was uh, zeroed so that it would be no more than uh, two inches high. And that happened at about 200 yards or 150 yards or so. I'm figuring for an 85 grain bullet, you're gonna be looking at a varmint bullet, so you don't want it to fly too high. So your maximum point break range on that's 280 yards. Now, if you really, really wanna compare that to a, the fastest one, that uh, 257 Weatherby Magnum, we'll do that right now, same bullet, but look at the velocity difference. Oh, I've got the wrong number down. 3,600 feet per second is what it should be, not 2,000. But there you can see the differences in your drops and drifts. It's fairly substantial, but not huge once you're inside of 300 yards. So I think they're both pretty darn effective little uh, deer hunting rifles and great for pronghorns. But if you step up to the heavier bullets, that's of course when your bigger cartridges always tend to take over. So with a 120 grain spear, which has a ballistic coefficient of 0 0.480, which is pretty high, and you're driving at 2,858 feet per second with the Roberts, which you know, that is not all that bad. That's just right up there with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Of course, the Creedmoor shooting 140 grain bullet and getting that about that much speed, maybe a little bit less. But you've got your drops and drifts there. We'll compare them now to that same 120 grain bullet in the 257 Weatherby. Now you're seeing, seeing some substantial differences. I mean, at 300 yards, you've got not even an inch of drop out of the 257 Weatherby Magnum, but you've got four, almost four and a half inches of drop out of that 257 Roberts. So yeah, there's a bit of a difference there. Not so much difference with the wind deflection, but that's again because they're using the same bullet with the same BC. Considerably less energy, about almost 500 or 600 foot-pounds less energy at the 257. But gee, 1,400 foot-pounds of energy at 300 yards is still plenty for whitetails and mule deer. But then out there at 400 yards, extreme range again for a cartridge like this, 17 inches of drop out of the 257 Roberts with 12 inches of wind deflection. Remaining energy is still not too bad at 1,218. That's still viable for whitetail and mule deer. But the 257 Weatherby is still screaming and you've gotten only, well, it's less than nine inches of drop, nine inches of wind deflection, and you're still hanging on to almost 1,800 foot-pounds of energy. So well, that's what horsepower will do for you. And you gotta get that by burning more powder. So yeah, you're gonna burn your barrels out faster with this one. And that's one of the th uh, reasons why that 257 Roberts was below it for so long. It's a pretty efficient little cartridge, not too expensive. Don't burn too much powder. Don't burn out your barrels. Does the job for deer and pronghorns and mule deer. And a lot of folks that use it on elk, not the greatest as usual, but can do the job with the right bullet in the right place. Hey, if you would like to listen to me answer questions off the top of my head, Ron Spomer Outdoors has a new channel on YouTube called RSO Podcasts. And as the name suggests, these are podcasts. You can catch them on your podcatcher or you can watch them on YouTube if you want or listen to them there. And what I'll do is answer questions uh, that folks send in after they watch these videos or read my articles on RonSpomerOutdoors.com website. And I'm gonna start interviewing interesting folks in the industry and some interesting outfitters and hunters and whatnot all. Get a few of those going. And I also read old articles uh, from back when, when I was publishing in a lot of different magazines. We're gonna go clear back into the 80s and sometimes even the 70s. So you might wanna check us out there, RSO Podcasts on YouTube. Hey, this is Ron Spomer. Thanks for tuning in to the Mystery Cartridge of the Week, the 257 Roberts. Oh, long may it live, but it probably won't. <laughs> Not much longer. Thanks for tuning in. Hunt honest and shoot straight.